Breaking just a few minutes ago, the European Union announcing it will purchase and deliver weapons to Ukraine, a first for the EU. All European Union countries also banning Russian planes from EU airspace. Let's bring in senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky in western Ukraine, along with senior Washington correspondent Devin Dwyer, who's here with us in our nation's capital. Aaron, let's begin with you. Ukraine saying missiles hit actually a radioactive uh, waste disposal facility in Kyiv overnight. What danger does that now pose to those who are still in the city? Well, thankfully, there was no apparent damage or any evidence of a radioactive leak. This is the kind of facility that helps with disposal of radioactive material from, from hospitals and the like. So it's low-level stuff. But it's an example, Kira, of the kind of collateral damage that can happen. And it's not the only bit of civilian infrastructure that's been hit so far in these early days of the fighting as as this fighting goes on on multiple fronts mainly in the capital Kyiv that's the centerpiece of the Russian invasion but there's also been heavy fighting in Kharkiv uh, out into the east in both places though the Ukrainian military says the defense is holding and and that's thanks in large part not only to the Ukrainian military which President Zelensky has been trying to constantly rally but also to a group of citizen soldiers who've been called to the fight. And, and I wanted to show you, Kira, if I could. The, the officials here in Ukraine have been posting instructions on how to make Molotov cocktails, and, and citizens are taking them up on the offer. And, and the most popular brewer in Lviv, Pravda Brewing, is no longer filling these bottles with beer, but giving them out empty so people can put gasoline and stuff a dish rag at the top to make a Molotov cocktail. This particular bottle has a rather unflattering picture of Vladimir Putin and an equally unflattering caption. But they are taking this very seriously and citizens are learning to make Molotov cocktails and stockpiling them in ditches along the side of the road should there be any need if the Russian army should advance here. So Aaron, what does that tell you about just how Ukrainians are responding and preparing. I mean, we talk about the refugee crisis and so many people leaving at the same time. Clearly, there are Ukrainians wanting to stay and, and protect uh, their homeland. We've heard that hubris, that, that they are not going to go down without a fight. But, but there's also a sadness behind it, Kira, because they, they just say they want to live. If you, you look at Kyiv, or, or any Ukrainian city. This was a modern capital a week ago that where, where people were outside, you know, sipping coffee or on their laptops doing work, as you'd see anywhere in, in the United States or around the world. And, and almost instantaneously, it has been turned uh, onto a war footing. And, and that involves the, the troops, but it also involves people that we see on the streets uh, just tracking luggage. And we were at Lviv's main train station today. It's a, a real place of refuge for people that are fleeing more dangerous parts of the country and trying to head for one of the international borders, as almost 400,000 Ukrainians have already done, according to the United Nations. People are waiting hours and hours on the platform in the main hall. Kids are just propped on luggage, fiddling with a Rubik's Cube, babies in mother's arms as people try to flee for safer ground. And at the same time, you know, what to make of, of Putin's uh, latest uh, comment of Devin on, on, on high alert, uh, responding with these threats of, of using nuclear weapons. How is the White House responding to this? Yeah, Kira, Russia has the largest stockpile of nuclear warheads in the world, more than 6,000 of them, 1,600 of them actively deployed. Uh, so certainly a concerning uh, threat by President Putin. The White House at this hour doesn't seem particularly alarmed. We heard from White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. She said this is part of a pattern from Vladimir Putin, manufacturing threats uh, to justify his aggression uh, in Ukraine and elsewhere. Uh, she insisted there's at no point been a direct threat from from NATO, much less Ukraine, uh, towards Russia or its people. Uh, that's a sentiment that's been echoed uh, just uh, a few minutes ago by the Pentagon, Kira, as you said. Uh, they have called this move, this announcement by Vladimir Putin, 
uh, escalatory and unnecessary. There is real concern, though, that this threat by uh, President Putin could, uh, you know, risk a miscalculation in some way by putting these forces on higher alert. So certainly watching that very closely, although I should say Kira asked directly if the United States has changed its nuclear strategic defense posture. Uh, an official would only say that uh, the Pentagon is very confident in our posture at this stage, um, but no question that this has injected a new sense of worry and concern uh, as this continues to evolve. And Devin, Secretary of State Antony Blinken also saying the United States will provide $54 million now in humanitarian aid to help Ukrainians. What exactly will that money go toward? Yeah, the United States is the biggest donor of humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. Um, hundreds of millions of dollars already given, $54 million announced overnight. This is to address that humanitarian crisis you talked about earlier, 368,000 so far, according to the UN, uh, fleeing for the, for the borders. Uh, Samantha Power, the USAID administrator, tweeted a short time ago uh, a picture of some of that aid arriving, 23,000 high thermal blankets. It's cold over there. Aaron can tell you that. It's damp. It's chilly. People waiting in line for hours outside on both sides of the border. And, and also this, take a look, 640 satellite phones to help maintain communications on the ground. That has been seen uh, as critical to the Ukrainians. A lot of their officials has, have asked for this as the Ukrainian military jams communications, uh, launches those cyber attacks on the internet. Having sat phones on the ground uh, could be a critical help to them as they communicate uh, with the West uh, and with their allies, Kira. All right, Aaron Katursky and Devin Dwyer, gentlemen, thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.